Hey there, viewers of Flow. Live right here. I'm in Air Whip's new academy in Sweden right now, about to interview the Farang Mac Daddy, Red Bull athlete. You get oh, electric shock. Oh, there we go. And the bringer of champagne. Can you pass me that fruit bowl as well, please? You got you some fruit in case mid interview you want to slice up a pineapple and eat it with all the great kitchen facilities we have right now. All right. That was a great host. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we're in Sweden right now, taking a break from the horrible winter European weather, yet we're still in Europe and with the winter weather. <laughs> but we're inside. Uh, I first remember you, really not even that long ago, 2009, uh, World Championships, I think. Was that the first time we met, do you remember? Yeah, that was the first time we met. Yeah. And I was still like 18. First time, like meeting all the international guys back then. Yeah. You had short hair and uh, didn't really know who you were and next thing I know you're third place on the <laughs> leaderboard. I've got a photo at home hanging up in my hallway. Me, Victor Showtime Lopez and you there on the right hand side. Um, since then you had a good few years in what, Red Bull comp the week after? Yeah. You came second in a Red Bull competition. Yeah. Like, I've, I've done a few videos before and then yeah. I got invited to, to Barker Card and nobody really knew me back then and then as soon as I got third, somehow, I did stuff to could uh, yeah. the, what's it called, the judges liked, and then got third place, and then everything just kind of went on from there. Did that give you a lot of confidence that what you were doing and your style was the right thing to stick with then? It was just like, I came, I came to the competition, I was like, everybody's doing these massive tricks, so I, I can't battle them massive tricks, so I have to try to yeah. do something nobody else is doing. So I was like, okay, everybody else is going for difficulty, I will try to get flow and a little bit creative stuff then. Yeah, and that's really good. Worked and then you did a few competitions years after. We were together in Q8, we've been Santorini, Brazil, Japan, and, and you've been fairly successful in all of them. Do you know your titles, how many you've won? And Phew, shit. I got like first place in Boston, Japan, Vienna. Yeah. Second in a few, third in a few. Yeah, yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Brazil, you came second, I think I came yeah. third in that one. Uh, Ryan got first. That's really good. And when, at what point did Red Bull recognize you as a talent and sponsor you? Uh, well, I got in, really in touch with Red Bull by the time I went to the London competition yeah. again. That okay. was when a German guy from German Red Bull came along with me and I had a good talk with him. Yeah. Met them at the office and then just like a few weeks later, I said, like, who would like to sponsor you? Are you down? Cool. And and what does being a Red Bull free run athlete entail? Because no one really knows. Like obviously, you might get a certain weight, but aside from that, do you have to do a certain amount of days? Do they give you treatment if you get injuries or what? Like, the good thing about being sponsored by Red Bull is that it's not just the sponsor giving you money and you wear yeah. clothing because <clears throat> they are so focused on sponsoring athletes that they have like a whole structure built around it. Yeah. They uh, have like a training facility in Austria, so if I ever get injured, I can go over to the training facility and they're gonna build me up and stuff. Yeah. They got like a, a, a expert in training who travels around Germany and just meeting different athletes. And oh, when they, I got his number whenever I need something or I have a question about training, I can yeah. bring him up or whatever. And then you get like invited to all the, the rebel events as well. Like if there's a rebel event in Germany, they call me and say, like, Formula One, you want to come? Really? Formula One? And then whatever you want to come, and they just get a ticket for me, my girlfriend, book a nice hotel, and just really? get they do a nice all. treatment. Yeah. That's cool. And you recently did a video called uh, The Athlete Machine. Yeah. And I mean, that was like really successful, got like five million views, and they went on to then. They saw a successful, well they did another one with their other Red Bull athletes, but you were the one that sparked that. Was that your idea you pitched to them or what? It was kind of like, um, we were thinking about doing a video together for like, even a year before was like when we said, let's make a video. Yeah. And then we were bouncing ideas back and forth and talking about different stuff and concepts and looking at other viral videos as well. Mm. Because this was, it was meant for YouTube and we wanted to have a certain amount of views. And then somehow we came up with that idea, it was like, just bouncing ideas back and forth. And yeah. We tried to find like the right production team to do it and yeah. ended up with the Dutch guy who filmed with Danny before. Okay. Who filmed the triple crown of Danny back then. Ah, the, 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 yeah, the Phantom yeah. camera. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that guy was directing it. And he was, like, it's very different from the Danny stuff, but yeah. that's cool. But he's like a super, super awesome guy. Yeah. And where did you shoot it? Was it in Thailand or that? Like Hamburg. Oh, it's in Hamburg. Hamburg. Okay. Oh, you shot it in Germany. Yeah, we had like a massive, uh, empty building and the guy who owned it said you can do whatever just fix it afterwards 
Oh, okay. so we two things it after. Red Bull, <laughs> someone. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> after all that destruction as well. That's cool. And then you spend a lot of your time in Bangkok, right? From, from what year did you start going to Bangkok? The first time like, I met you in 2009 at Barney yeah. Cart, and that's the same time I met Sean as well. Yeah. We've been chatting on MSN for like years before, and yeah. then I met him in person. Yeah. And he always visits Anand in Thailand, and now he lives there as well. Mm. So he told me to come over. And I think in 2011 was the first time I came over, and yeah. we filmed the video too. And then 2012, we started the whole Frank team. So it's only a year old now, but you're really, yeah. really doing what I think the community really loves, everything you're doing. Um, that recent video is one of my favourite videos of all time. That passion, was it Passion of the Boss? Or the, the Boss Mode. The Boss Mode, that's yeah. the one, really good. Yeah. Everything in it, um, the soundtrack. And your style in particular is one that inspires me. You have the mindset of you never want to, it seems to me that you never want to let the viewer's mind rest. Like, they should never have to think for a second. If you're running for three steps, then they're thinking already too much. And you, you, it's like you always have to put a trick in so that they have to go back and be like, what the hell did I just see and watch it again? Is that how you approach when you're doing runs and videos? I always just try to find like a, a nice line. I don't mm. want to just find a trick or something. I always try to find like a nice line and a nice yeah. connection of stuff. And that's yeah. like, I always try to like, I, I never want to think of myself as like, I'm, I've did a lot of videos, a lot of people know me. I don't even really have to try it yeah. anymore. I, every time I do it, I think of it like, this is the first video I ever make. This is the first thing people are going to see of me. Mm. That shows, that really shows. Yeah. And even in uh, China, we went there recently with, yeah. with Kai and Marcus as well. Yeah. And um, we filmed a video for Storm Free Run and everything you did in that was all either new tricks or really nice flow moves. And, yeah. and that inspired me to go back and try and approach the same. And again, people training free running, I'd really say look at Jason's stuff and see how you can uh, apply it. Mix with, obviously don't copy the style, but apply that mindset of um, like, he said, if someone's watching your stuff for the first time, every time, never slap, you know, stay young. <laughs> don't, don't repeat yourself all the time. Yeah. It's like a lot of people get to a certain stage and then they're like pro or whatever and then they don't have as much time to progress anymore because they're doing jobs and traveling a lot and then you always have to try to push, do something you didn't do in the video before. Yeah, yeah. As much as you're on the camera representing and inspiring people that way, you like to be behind the camera as well, right? Yeah, it's like it's always, whenever we're filming, it's mostly Anna and Sean and me going out, so one person's always behind the camera. Yeah. So I rarely see shots of all three of us together. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's Pasha as well, and we're getting him to start filming more and stuff, which is cool. Is it? Um, yeah, it's just like we, we're a full on team and do everything together. We film, we pick the music, often from artists we know in person as well. Cool. We do the whole editing, we do color correction. Yeah. We, the designs for clothing and everything. Yeah, and even we've been filming some stuff here, and it's cool to observe your approach to it is different from obviously I shoot with Claudio and Giles yeah. and them. Like, and you've, you've again another different approach, and it's it's great that there's so many different ways to approach everything that you do. And free runners have that mentality where we're not just athletes. As the free running side, we have to be creative in every aspect, like apply it to every part of life. And filming is a really great outlet for that. You have a series on the YouTube like Off the Grid. Yeah, who came up with that idea? I thought that was really cool. Uh, off the Grid is actually a series we jacked off the Berries, okay. which is like a, a skate park and they always do these series and we got really inspired by it and yeah. just felt like that's a fun thing we'd like to try. Yeah. That's how we got into it. We have to do more of those, we've only got like two. Yeah. We're gonna try and they were, I really enjoyed that concept and it's cool that Freeman is now, you've got to move beyond just putting out single moves in the video. You have to come up yeah. with a little story and concept like that and, and that's how we'll help, we'll help the whole scene to develop, I think. Um, and then Because there's so much more to free running than moves as well. It's never just about the jump. It's like if you would just go out and do jumps all day, yeah. it's not about, it, it wouldn't appeal to us as much. It's so much it's about the normal. adventure and the excitement of like exploring something mm -hmm. and doing stuff. And you always try to tell a little bit of that story in the yeah. videos as well. Like we climbed through that empty office building across the ledge and stuff yeah. in the boss video. Yeah, and there's the elevator shot where people start doing tricks and all of a sudden the camera shoots off yeah. and it takes the viewer a second to realise yeah. what's gone on and that's re really ingenious to put like put things like that in its smart content that keeps people coming back to watch your content again and again even if they're not necessarily free running fans, they, they you know it's more viral than people, people just share. like to be surprised and see something they didn't see before. Exactly, um, you've got quite unique dress sense within free running. Not all free runners seem to think about that, or they just 
or wear triple XL pants and a tight t-shirt or baggy t-shirt, whatever. Whereas you seem to wear like these harem pants and even now you're wearing skinny jeans. You, you get a lot of hate on the internet for baggy pants. <laughs> I, I get a lot of comments on, on yeah. like mostly the pants I wear, but it's just like, I don't know. I yeah, guess. yeah. People don't seem to understand, like, you can wear what you want, man. It doesn't matter, you don't have to follow this one formula of free running style, be your own creative. And even from that, then, you've got Ferrand clothing line, and you've got t shirts, which aren't just a regular fitted t shirt. You've gone and designed the fit yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. How did, how did you approach that? We. Have, because being in Thailand, we have not just we don't just take any T-shirt and buy it and then print on it. We actually have the possibility to go to a factory and say, look, this is what we want the collar to look like. This type of stitching is what we yeah. want to have, and we just wanted to use that possibility and try to be creative with it. And so instead of just buying any shirt, that's cool, and that's great for the sport as well because it shows that it's not just people trying to print a logo on a T-shirt. It's like yeah. we're actually trying to think of people that watch your videos and like, oh, I want to. I like his style, I want to dress kind of like him, yeah. and you're offering that to the viewers then too. It's just you, everything you want to you do, you want to do as best as you can. If you mm. do, do a move, you want to do it as best as you can. If you mm. film a video, you want to do a good video, not just yeah. some crappy whatever. And the same just applies to everything you do in life, if you have that attitude. Like this. Yeah, that's how you, it's success. Success is an attitude, not a, like a destination, it's a journey, isn't it? So you're, you're an athlete and a filmmaker, but what really like is your biggest inspiration at the moment? Is it other free runners or, is it, or where does that come from? When it comes to like just the, the sport and progressing the sport, I look a lot just like skateboarding, snowboarding, and all these different um, sports, which are from the development wise, they're a lot ahead of us, but there's lots of things that went the same way they went for free running. Mm -hmm. So I love like watching the recent Bones Brigade video, which interviewed like Tony Hawks and Rodney Marlon, told their story. And then training wise, what inspires me a lot is just a lot of the Russians are super sick, like Shade is always an inspiration. Yeah. Although he does lots of videos when nothing much happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pasha is always awesome to have him around because he like he thinks in a like a lot of people just think like in moves like yeah. this move plus this move would look sick. Yeah. But Pasha has like a different way of thinking. He's like because everything that something just is nice if it, there's a contrast to it. Yeah. Like you only feel good if you felt bad before. Yeah. And for for him, he sees it in the same with movement. Like if he has a fast movement, he tries to have like moment where he stops afterwards or something slow. Oh. But if he has like a big movement, like a cartwheel yeah. or aerial, he tries to have like a small roll uh, or something afterwards. So it's like aesthetic to the eye, but it's a subliminal thing where you don't, yeah. you just know it looks good, but you're not sure why, but he's thought about it so like behind that. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. It's like breakdancing. If someone only does air flares and windmills, yeah. windmill all of a sudden is not amazing anymore. Yeah, yeah. If you do like lots of small stuff and then you go into windmills, it's all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah. It has an effect, and he's like, he's so ahead of everyone and like thinking that way. And yeah. I'm trying to get inspired by that and use yeah. some of that. So looking to the future of yourself, basically, <laughs> and for Ryan. Yeah. Um, I know me personally. I don't like looking too much into the future as long as I'm put my passion into the moment. The future always seems to work out all right so far. Um, what What's your plans? Do you have any long term goals with free running or with anything else? I don't really have like a, a long term goal where I'm like that's exactly where I want to be when I'm in five years time or ten years yeah. time but I just know I still want to stay in this free running world because I like the mindset all the people share. Yeah. I just feel like if I do whatever I enjoy doing, maybe like making clothing or filmmaking or just going out and training, that will take me to where to where I want to be yeah. automatically. Like you can't connect the dots looking forward. You yeah. have to like look back and afterwards and see why did I get where I'm now? Steve like, Jobs. Yeah, yeah Steve Jobs. Yeah. <laughs> he knows, man. Yeah. Yeah, he, de uh, he definitely knows. Watch the Steve Jobs commencement speech. I've seen that. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Anyway, it's just like, I feel like I want to, instead of like lots of freerunners think to be a freerunning professional, you have to be like doing performances, you have to build like an agency or a show team mm. and do like that kind of stuff, which is like, it doesn't revolve around the free running community. It doesn't give anything back. It's just going out and out, and all the energy is wasted instead of building a sport, instead of pleasing companies. And mm. the end result is not as good as if you would do it yourself most of the time. And I did a lot of that work to just get by and, and get food in my mouth. And then yeah. I want to do less and less of that and just 
pretty creative with doing videos and training and making clothing and having fun with that. And the more you push the sport to, to progress and be more recognized worldwide, globally, the more you're going to be able to do that because people yeah. are going to trust you yeah. and give you the funding to help yeah. you know, put it back into the community, which is yeah. great. Instead of, like you said, people just do performance and make the quick money off the show. They're not actually looking out for the community and that's, it's great that people like you are looking out for it, so thank you for that. It's just like, if you think like doing one thing will get you to another thing instead of doing the thing you want to do in the first place, it's not the way it works. It's like, you don't do porn and then you get into acting. <laughs> like if you want to do free running videos for a living, start doing free running videos and becoming really good at what you're doing. And one day somebody will come and be like, what you're doing is sick, can you keep doing that? Just, I give you money for it. Yeah. You'd be like, awesome. <laughs> but you have to go through that period of like, like possibly years and years of doing something without getting anything back and without even seeing a chance of getting anything back. Mm -hmm. But then one day, probably you'll get the opportunity and then you're ready for it to take it. And that's the most important thing. Sweet. All right, now I've put our post on Facebook and Twitter asking for your lot's questions. And I'm going to check some of those replies now and put them through to the non himself. Me. Richard Faraday on the Twitter. What's up, Richard? Says, aside from parkour slash free running, etc., what's your next biggest passion in life? Next biggest passion would be filmmaking and taking photos. Mm. That's, it. That's cool. Yeah. And that works. You can apply that then yeah. to yeah. free running as well. Ryan Pears, ask him to never go back to long hair. I don't know if people know, show them your hair right now. I look Ma like a Russian gangster now. He got famous while he had long hair, and uh, now he's shaved it, always keeping it. Uh, reinvent yourself. Reinvent yourself, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I get a mohawk or something. Uh, Sideways mohawk, like Statue of Liberty. Stay relative in the community, that's what you do. Grow your hair long, shave it on it. This question's come through on the Storm Freeman Facebook from Chicken Crowley. <laughs> is, that, uh, is that a name? Man, it's Facebook, you can call yourself what you want. Chicken is a cool name. It is a cool name. Where does he get all his awesome trousers with five likes? Five likes, wow. Um, most of my pants I get in Bangkok, there's like those of street markets and stuff. Mm. So I just pick them up there. Yeah. Some of them are actually women's pants or whatever. And just cool. get them a size bigger. They fit. <laughs> yeah. Matt Peaver, tell him to grow his hair back. Okay. Grow your hair back. I don't mean it. <laughs> I don't mean it, but this guy told me to tell you. Liam Samut, did he have any major injuries? Um, broke my arm once. How? <laughs> I was just balancing on a rail and slipped and fell like onto the rail with my arm. And How big was the drop? Handrail. <laughs> 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 How unlucky. Yeah. But did you learn from it? Well, like dry shoes. Keep your arms here if oh. you fall off a rail. <laughs> <laughs> and like my arm actually. I kind of broke this bone, mm. and I was all by myself. I was training balancing on like a, a track and field course. Yeah. And then I just like, because it was a little bit off, I just like took it like this and pressed it back in. Oh, yeah. And then it looked normal again. I was like, oh, maybe it's not even broke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I took my bike and rode back home. And then? <laughs> my mom drove me to the hospital. Oh, okay. <laughs> Another one from Braden Badley. When is the beach coming? What's the beach? I don't know, you just said that. No. What are you talking about, Brain? I have no idea what you guys are on about that beach thing. I don't know. Harvey Den Man. Den Man. M Man, that's Gang Man. What is his favourite London spot? How often have you been to London? I've been to London like three, four times. Have you trained there much? Not super much, but I think my favourite one is Warsaw. Yeah. A lot of requests. Someone wants you to come to India, someone wants you to come to Manchester. So much come to Guam, where the hell's Guam? I'm coming everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, meet me outside your house. I'll be there. Bring food. I'm gonna be hungry. Nicholas Camp. Nicholas Cage. Camp. <laughs> this is a good question. How is it to live in Bangkok? Good. Cheap, easy going. Everyone yeah, speaks yeah. English there. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody speaks English. Yeah. Traffic's a bitch. No, Bangkok is Bangkok is awesome. It's like they have cheap food, the mentality of the people is super nice, everybody is just nice. Would you say that's nice one of your inspirations, like being in Bangkok? Because it's just like it's free man like spirit. 
The thing about Bangkok is like it doesn't even have the best parkour spots or the best training mm. and it's always super humid so training is so so hard as well because yeah. you're sweating just by walking out of the door. Yeah. But then it's such a big city and it's so random. Like everywhere in Europe when you walk around a city you kind of feel like you know what's going to be behind the next corner. Yeah. But in Bangkok it's just like totally random city. You just you never know what's going to be around the next corner. Angel Mora. Will he be attending the Tempest Freerunning Academy anytime soon so I can PK with him? Yes, I will. Um, me, Anan, Pasha, Sean will be in LA for the Tempest Pro Takeover in February. We are arriving on the 15th, I think, and we're staying for like two to three weeks. So see you there. Topan Iskandar, Zulke and Nayan. Oh, that's the same one read that. How, do you, how would you say that? Topan Iskandar Zulkarnayan. What are you thinking while starting an extreme vaulting? He's got a sick haircut as well. It's not like an afro. He has a good smile. But he's an Indian guy. But, the, afro. but the important what are you thinking? still beckon. <laughs> what are you thinking while starting extreme vaulting? Clear mind. Because you don't think about anything while doing a move. Mm. You just think about the moves. So. Damien Janus. I tack was Ros Jebby. Who's that? Ah, yeah. Snack, 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 snack. Yeah. Another question from Twitter, from at Callum Powell, from Brighton, England. How did the X Tour come about? X Tour was like just a Europe trip all of us did, all the Fast Break, fast break athletes. And Fast Break is a backpack company and said, hey, we want to support you, we want to do something cool. And we said, there's sort of a parkour at all, which was like a dream of all of us for a long time. Yeah. So they gave us a budget and a van and we just went and toured Europe and filmed a video for them. It was a really cool video. And you came to London and met me and Kai and Storm Guy. Right, yeah, we went, we went Italy to Crap Invaders, we went to Basel, we went to Paris, we went to London to meet you guys, we went to Amsterdam and to here, Helsingborg as well. Cool. All right, that's it for the online questions. Thanks very much for asking. Thank you, Jason for being our guest in this lovely environment today. Um, stay tuned to Flow, subscribe, check out the other videos. We've got all of the content POVs. Um, Walters and Sheaf show is back on again now. So hope you're enjoying that stuff and stay tuned for more interviews in the future with other world-class free running athletes. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Woo! Feels like whoever opens this. <laughs>